right there. I'm about to do not the first, which is technically the first, but it's a uh, initial oil change. You gotta be handy with your steel, you know what I mean? And it is an initial oil change on the Kubota Z421 Commander Pro with them 24s. Yep. What I mean by initial oil change, this thing here is filthy. It's got like I'm talking about like I've been I've been mowing dusty. I've been mowing dusty. Uh, it's also a good time to check out your. Well, I'm gonna do it in a minute here. These things on here pretty tight, ain't they? This is a good time to check out your air filters. Man. Let's see. Man, that dude dirty too. <laughs> That's just the pre-filter. Okay, there we go. That's just the pre-filter right there. It's dirty. I'm gonna blow it off a little bit. What we're gonna need for this little oil chain. Wait a minute for a second. I'll rest. See I'm at 13 upside down hours. Supposed to do this initial oil change at eight hours that's the break in but I went over a little bit see what we're gonna need for this here come on around here alright we gonna need them shop towels man I should've took this camera off this pod let me do that okay better shot better shot gonna need this plastic here I use this here for like when I take the oil field off I wrap it up in that then I put it back in this respective box which would be this box I went and got myself a Kawasaki oil filter I was gonna use Napa or which is you know that your part number I was gonna use Napa but they filters are not just as good as Kawasaki or Kubota Kubota would be the better one you're gonna need upside down everything a 10 inch 10 millimeter I meant it rich you're gonna need the little oil filter dude right here I like using the oil buddy you ever use the oil buddy put this on top of your can turn that dude over then you stick it on the hole like all y'all go in no spill this mold gonna take 2.2 .2 quarts. This is what I got. For our environment, it's kinda warm up here. So that's the viscosity I went with. And I got paper bag. So I'm gonna put it down here just in case some spill from here. Let's get started. All right, see this? That's where that 10 millimeter wrench go. You unscrew it like a drain, and all your oil comes out here, drop through the bottom into your container. Just that simple. You're gonna take that oil filter right there, my finger at, right there, spin them off, fill. Let's get the business right here. Alright, gonna move the plug out there. Put down my little flash pads here. I'm out of uh, I'm out of little absorbent pads I normally use when I do stuff like this. So I'm gonna have to improvise with a paper bag. So I got the engine up to temperature. I'm gonna make sure the cap is closed. Hold them down, hold them down. I'm gonna make sure that the cap is closed so the oil won't come out as fast when I first open it. Then I'm gonna let it free ball, you know. Let me see if we lined up right here. Just like this. A little bit. Alright. Make sure my 
Nope, we ain't ready. Alright. Got them loose a little bit there. Come on now. Come on. We got pee pee. <laughs> oh, we got that line up. You'll never believe that. I got to show you. Let's see if I can get down here. Come on, get in there. Get in there. Get in there. Can you see that? That stuff went straight in the hole. I got that perfect. Ain't that so? Oh! Well, tripods know they come. That is too draining right there. Go tighten them back up. I know y'all wanted to watch our oil drain out of there. Probably mad, like, you want to see all the oil drain out? You want to see every drop of it? Now I got to get ready to go pour this oil in the ditch. Now I'm going to pour it in that pond over there. You go back. To the environment, when you pour it in a pond, it it, 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 it helps the bio bio dome. <laughs> I, <just pour it. laughs> I bet I had all kinds of tree huggers ready to kill me. <laughs> Man, it's easy getting this off. It ain't that easy putting it back on. Tighten me because it's a plastic screw to be exact. Oh, oh man. Hi. Hi, that's right now. Now I gotta get this all filled off. This is gonna be the messy part. Let's go ahead and get my other one ready here. Yeah. Screw on tight. What you do is you stick your finger in your oil. Rub them around that little rubber gasket right there. Let's keep them sticking next time. Yeah. A lot of people use old oil, new oil. It don't matter. Just, just put some oil on that gasket. Put some oil on there. Y'all, this here is a Stanley wrench. I'm not a fan of Stanley, but what I like about this wrench is, is you get pulled out of everything. Like if you turn it and you go back, when your hand doing this here, you getting motion out of everything, see? So you can actually use it like this. Or like I say, every time you doing this here, you actually get motion out of that wrench. Good wrench. I normally use something a little heavier. But this wrench here is just so convenient. Bye. Right, we got them loose there. Come on back off of them now. Get my wrench ready for tight. I like to push it as I'm spinning it off, just so it'll hold more oil in there. So it just won't be leaking out as I'm coming out. And once I start feeling all funny, I pull them out of there. Head up. Spin this new dude on. Spin it till it gets hand tight. Then you want to 
gonna get like a quarter turn on the tight side. And I use my wrench as a gauge. All right. Well, I didn't have it too much hand tight. It is 10 hours, 30 minutes. All right, get on now. Get on now, all right. Be tight. Come on off of there, man. All right. Now we want to check hand tightness. We good. And if some people are the type of people that's not sure of what they do, what you want to do is you want to put your stick back in. This time you want to turn it. Take them out. No oil. So you did drain the right oil. Got that oil buddy on there. This buddy do us good here. Oh man, I can't even get in there. <laughs> oh man, oil oh, buddy got me. <laughs> Damn. Ain't that about some kind of shit. My bad. <laughs> this rock is in the way. Now I got to go get a strainer. Cause all oh, buddy ain't gonna get in there. Yeah, yeah. Well, we went for not making a mess to making one of the biggest mess you ever seen on planet Earth. Up too. The more I let it sit, the more places it's gonna find to go and drip all over the place. So we're gonna go ahead and get that off. Well, that just that just that just aggravates me there. That aggravates me there, boy. Big time. You just don't know how bad I just feel like cussing and tearing up something right now. <laughs> I mean, I could see if it leaked a little bit, but it just skeeted out here. Well, man. Let's see if I can find a better place. This ROP had to be in the way. ROP, y'all, that's ROP, rollover protection, is what they call it. They call it. You gonna try that again, boy? I sure ain't. Not. Because of the damn <laughs> <laughs> And I think my, no, I thought my funnel was like way out in the back. You may have one over here. Make sure this funnel clean. You don't want to put no dirt in there. So I take this uh, brake parts cleaner and I rinse it out. So they pretty much a dry and they get out any other contaminants you have in there. You may have brake fluid or some other contaminant. And you take this brake parts cleaner Get all that out. Then we'll dry it back out. Cause that stuff will also break down your oil if you get it in your oil. So we want to have that clean and dry. You're learning something, ain't you? The one thing I learned is make sure your stuff works before you try it. All buddy known to my buddy. <laughs> but all buddy today didn't fit around this thing. Yep. Man, this thing here kind of cumbersome too. But it gonna fit. 
If it don't, I'm gonna make it fit. If it don't fit, you must have quit. <laughs> now you gotta take it slow, bo. Oh, you gonna spill. You ain't gotta worry about this quart, pour it off. Cause you ain't got nothing in it. Y'all probably my next oil chain, I'm going full synthetic. Preferably raw purple. I like running raw purple in my generator. Cause that generator is gonna run for hours upon hours upon hours, probably even all night long. And raw purple, it runs cool. Plus synthetic lasts a whole lot longer. Quart number two. Jeez, I need to get myself a quarter bill after this, man. I don't got heart. <laughs> Quote number three. Thing about quote number three here, I just want to put a little couple drops in there. Like so, that's point two. Okay. I don't know. <laughs> Now here go an important tip, whenever I can find it, all right. When you check in the oil on this mow here, like I said, at first you want to screw it in, but this time, when you check in the correct amount, you don't want to screw it in. You want to put them in, then check. Looks to be full. I'm gonna go for it again because I also got some on that dip too. Yeah, we full. I was right. Point two. Dry everything up. Put that old tube to tube back in there. Alright, I'm going to show y'all something else I do. First, you take this paper towel. You wipe your face off. <laughs> Get your paper towel a little more. You know what I'm saying? You don't want it dry. This phase. All right. Now I spilled that oil. I'm gonna spray everything in that area. This will beat it all down. Won't give you no tacky mess in the end. If it was your vehicle, you don't want to do this if you're worried about the paint because this, this stuff ain't good for your paint. So then break this oil down so it won't let it get all that uh, dust stuck on it. I might even get around today, change the oil to the king of the jungle. Uh, uh, that big grown man may change his oil today. <laughs> I don't know. Damn, I got oil on my bill. Ain't that something went somewhere everywhere? That ain't gonna be good.
But I'm gonna try to get a little more done.